Youths demand higher positions in government, say they are tired of lower positions. And Sarab asked President Mohammad Buhari to probe the alleged misuse of 4.5 billion COVID-19 funds by the Kogi State government. A plus politics starts now, and I am Justin Akadonye. Now, youths across the country have called on President Mohammed Buhari and the Nigerian Governors Forum to make provision for them to have equal access to all levels of political leadership, saying they are tired of holding lower political positions in government. Uh, discussing with me is Vice National Coordinator of the Youth Democratic Party of Nigeria, Shegu Odwala, and here in the studios is the Public Affairs Analyst and, of course, a member of the Lagos uh, Youth Parliament, Olufemi Ojo. Many thanks, uh, gentlemen, for joining me this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Joseph. All right, uh, Shago, thanks for standing in too. Let's get straight into the business. Now, start with you, Femi. The youths, uh, they were over the weekend in Abuja, and they are demanding specifically from the president, Mohammed Buhari, and the governor's firm that they just don't want positions that are just uh, not high up there, I mean, I mean, not low there. They want something very, very, very high. If I should ask, uh, do you really think uh, the Nigerian youths have been sidelined over time in the decision-making process here in Nigeria? <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Justin. So, so for me, uh, I don't think um, the Nigerian youth have actually been sidelined, looking at what is actually happening right now. So uh, looking, taking Lagos State as a, um, a case study, just um, last week, um, the, the Sanwolu led and Amzat led administration in Lagos State um, um, put on board, gave appointments to about nine young people um, to be part of the Lagos State um, um, Sports Commission. Mm. But which it's just like a blank check, trying to create an enablement, a new environment for you in sports. You know, so I think that enough gives you gives you uh, a, a, a power, a strength to move forward. You know, mm. basically for another bigger position. So you can't just clamor for a commissioner or to be, become. The is chief it too of much staff. to ask for them to it, be commissioners? I, I, in in you know, your state specifically, they have a young man who is a commissioner. Even the minister of, uh, minister for sport uh, of sports, Sunday Dari is. Uh. A young I, I, I'm not saying I'm, so. So, Justin, you don't get me right wrong. Okay. So, I'm not saying it's it's too big to hack. Okay. But but you know, basically, there's you always a, start from somewhere. There's, yeah, there's a process. You know, there's a process. You know, there's a process of learning. You know, hmm. there's a process where you learn from those positions you are. You know, you just find yourself in the system. Okay. When you find yourself in the system, you create opportunity for yourself. So invariably, what you're saying is that uh, they need to learn the ropes uh, of uh, leadership in Nigeria. Are you saying that the Nigerian youth are not really uh, well-schooled or you know, ready to hold the top positions in Nigeria? So, so Justin, to be realistic with you, it's not about tweeting or using your phone to tweet. Mm. It's not about trying to do a write-up on Facebook. It's not about trying to do a write-up on LinkedIn. And I, I must tell you, um, the process, the system is different from what we see outside there. Mm. So when you don't know the system, then when you're not part of the system, then you don't know what to do. Okay. You, need, you need to take your time. You need to even learn. Even, even the, old, the people they call the old cargoes, the young persons call the old cargoes, we need to learn from there. All right, fine. I'll, bring, I'll come back to you, but let's uh, bring uh, Shego Odola into this conversation now. Uh, Femi, uh, your organization is uh, floating a political party. Uh, you've been following the discussions uh, here in the studios. Uh, I'll put it to you uh, point blank. Are Nigerian youths ready to take um, over the hems of affairs in Nigeria, the top positions? Uh, do you see uh, any young Nigerian being a governor, maybe Nigerian in their 30s or 40s, uh, being a governor anytime soon? Of course, yes, um, Justin. Um, I believe that the Nigerian youths are ready. They are ready to take up leadership position. You see, I do understand that uh, in certain settings, you need experience to be able to function um, uh, at, uh, at your best capacity. But you can learn on the job. You know, if we say that uh, the Nigerian youth are not ready to take up uh, sensitive positions in the, in the uh, society, then when are they going to be ready? You understand? Then how are we going to be able to measure their ability 
and then determine whether or not they are competent enough to fill up those positions. So if we can give them positions at the sport uh, 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 ministry, I think we can as well give them, find people who are competent, Nigerian youth who are competent, who have been able to prove themselves in their field of uh, uh, career, who have been able to prove their, themselves credible enough to run for certain positions. I think they should be given the opportunity to also uh, 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 express their ability and their skills in leadership, you understand? Because even in school, leadership starts from schools, leadership starts from home. What you have been able to learn over the years, that is what you will put to play. And when it, when it comes to governance, you know, I heard my, uh, my friend over there, he said that, um, uh, that nine, uh, Nigerian youths are not ready and that uh, uh, they have to learn from one office to the other. You see, when you, when you base your argument on that, then you most likely will not give the opportunity to someone for them to learn. Because all at right, the end all right, of the day, I get all you, of you that cannot... now. But let's take it back to elections that we've had over time. Uh, not too long ago, we had, we had an election in Nigeria, you know, the 2019 um, elections. Uh, from the demographics and the statistics that were reeled out, uh, the participation of the young Nigerians, of the youth specifically, were more active, or was active rather, on social media, just like she, uh, Femi had opined here. You know, there was so much of activism, advocacy, and all of that on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn as it is. But uh, on the day of elections, uh, most of the people who came out to voice were the older generation and the women. So. How do we begin to shift this position to not just campaign and do advocacy on social media and begin to take the decisions and begin to take uh, you know, this power for ourselves? I'm a young man, specifically. Okay, you know? um, th yeah. thank you very much, uh, Justin. You see, in 2019, during 2019, the mindset that the Nigerian youth had is different from what they have now. Right now, so what has changed? They have What's finally. Changed? What has changed is that they have finally been able to find their voice. Now they know that they have a voice, and if they can be able to speak up, they yeah. can effect a positive change. Back in 2019, they are exposed to how things are supposed to be done on and on, and they can see that even the rule of law in the country was not taking its effect. They can see that there is no, there is nothing moving in the right direction. So they gave up on the system. And when people have given up on the system, how then do you encourage them to come and be part of that system? But now they are saying that we want to come and get involved in the system. We don't want to be overshadowed by any kind of godfatherism sentiment or anything like that. We want a leader we can call our own. So let's have a political party of our own. All and right, that is Chabu. what gave birth to the NSAS protest. First of all, what they did was they spoke out. They spoke up. And they all banded together uh, 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 because of the ideology. And they came out and had that protest, having one voice. And that exposed them to the fact that they actually have power, to the fact that they can actually cause change. And that is what gave birth to the idea of having a youth political party, which gave birth to Youth Democratic Party of Nigeria. So all now, right, all right, the thank you, Shago. Would we'll you come back to And they you. believe that. All right, Chego, but let's okay, talk to okay, let's talk ahead. to Lufemi yeah. right now. Let me just read out some of um, the points that were made over the weekend uh, from the group demanding higher positions. Uh, they said uh, mainstreaming the youth in the national agenda should not be construed to mean uh, just recruiting youth in the lower key of leadership and government. It is about transforming young people by giving them equal access to all political and social economic spheres and also making them the focal point in the formulation and implementation of government policies. How can these be brought to bear, judging by the fact that uh, the young people are saying that the old people, in quote, are not willing to allow them, you know, even raise their voices. Okay, okay, thank you, Justin. Uh, let me go back to what you're going to say. Okay. Your question, okay. Yeah. The truth is, the truth is, it is not about we speak in English. It's more than that. That's what I was trying, I was talking about the system. It's not about trying to talk about the fact that 
there's not going to be the difference between 2019 and 20, 20, uh, 2023 election. There'll be no difference. There'll be no difference because so? I, I, I just know, I'm very sure that the youth will just stay at the back of um, in their homes trying to tweet. You know, you so see you a lot of tweets. It's still Soroso going to be the, the it's, like, I, I, I tell change. you, for, okay, after the Sorosoke movement, there was an election of Lagos um, West, Centuria mm. District okay. in Lagos State um, that, brought, that brought in um, the new senator from APC. How many youths voted? That's the question. It's more than what he's saying. How many youths are party carrying, they are card carry member? You, you don't just do that. You don't just sit down, you just, just criticize the system. Let me give you an example of the 2019 election. We have um, youth, uh, youth parties, right? We have um, some, I, I'm not going to mention them, so we have some um, presidential candidates coming out. What is the impact? What is the traction? So even a uh, presidential candidate that cannot come together, to pull a youth, youthful agenda? Do they really need to come together to pull uh, an agenda? So, so if you feel like, if you feel like... Or, 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 some so, would say that uh, the, um, the big names, the APCs, the PDPs, and all of that, they should actually uh, maybe create a, a platform where the young people can actually not be discouraged by money politics, godfatherism, and all of the issues that Justin, we have in Nigerian politics. Justin, let me give an example of the APC and the PDP. Go ahead. It's still, it's still like... Op I, I'm just trying to tell you, there's a blank check in every organization you, are, you, you, you join. For instance, you're working with this organization. Um, the, from the first day, or from the first day you step your foot here, you, you know what you want to achieve. So you being two year old, or your boss being 15 year old, does not mean. It depends on how consistent you are. What if and I being two year old don't have the wherewithal to actually fight and you know, struggle to come out to be heard? The Commissioner for Agriculture in Lagos State is a young chap. She's a young chap. A, a lot of SA in the Ministry of Youth are young persons. These are, these are politicians. They are part of the government. They are making decisions. They are part of decision making. That is how. But this is just like a, a state out of 36 states of the How many system. states, how many states, are, you know, a lot of states have young people in governance. Look at um, the Commissioner for Youth in Kwara State. Look at her. The SA on Youth in Kwara State. The Commissioner for um, Youth in Oyo State. Are we talking? Look at um, Commissioner for Youth in Niger State. So this, it, it, is, it, is, it is actually clear. My question is, the, the young persons, or my challenge right now, is the young persons being given opportunity to be in the ends of, of affairs, are they doing, are they getting results? Are, are they, they driving results? Are they? And I, I'm them? telling you for free that 75% are driving results. Okay, let's get back to Shergo. I'm sorry, sure you have been following the conversation. So let me, let, me, let, me, let me quickly add this to you. Very quickly, please. 2023 election has started, mm. but the youth are just tweeting. That makes the difference. What should they be doing right now? Should they? they should the same. The same thing. The same thing. The older gener generations are doing. Let's keep doing it. All right, uh, Shago, uh, you have been following the conversation. Uh, you've heard uh, Femi, and he says uh, that uh, the 2023 uh, elections are on the way. I mean, this 2021, but of course, preparations, uh, a lot of politicking uh, are ongoing right now. So how? Uh, does the average Nigerian youth, uh, you know, places himself to be in the forefront so his voice can be heard? There's a difference from what happened in 2019 and now. Mm. You see the emergence of NSAS protest actually mm -hmm. sparked the mind of the youths that are going to change this nation for good. The youths are at work. Now, he talked about the local government elections that were, uh, uh, that were held and... The, uh, which an APC member emerged, sorry, the senatorial, senatorial election. The youths were leaking their woods at that time. They do not know which way to follow. The youths do not have a well-defined ideology by a political party that belongs to a youth that is run by the youths. What the youth want is a political party that can be run by the youths themselves, that gives them the right to aspire for any position in the country, be it the presidential position, the Senate position, the governorship position. And I'm telling you that once we provide that platform, which is what YDPN is saddled with, once we provide that platform to the youth, the youth are going to come out massively. Once they know that this time around, they are engaging themselves in something that will bring positive results, that will effect positive change, then you will see the youth in another dimension. He talked about the NSAS protest as they were tweeting and all that. You can also testify with me. You can bear me witness that that, uh, that online presence was transformed into a physical presence, so much so that the government could not hold it back anymore, and the lucky massacre had to happen. 
they had to devise many means to ensure that they hijacked the protest and they failed. The youths were resolute on their demands. And that is the mindset the youths are bringing to the polling unit now. They are bringing all their grievances to the polling unit. They are taking their grievances to their polling, to the polling booth, to cast their vote for the right person, for the right candidate, the most competent candidate. Not because that candidate is connected to somebody. Not because that candidate is being favored, is being favored to run for that position, but because the candidate is passionate and the candidate is competent, credible enough to deliver in that position. And that is what the youth are looking out for. The youth will select their own leader by themselves. And when we talk about the age limit that has been placed, it is because the youth believe that for any organization to work perfectly, that is why they have the age limit set in every organization for a retirement. For retirement. Why is it that a, a, a nation as sensitive, a business as sensitive, as sensitive as a nation's business, we do not have an age limit? The only age limit is against the youth that are supposed to be growing and the youth that are supposed to be ex expressing themselves, their passions and all. So that is the reason why right now the youth are coming out to say enough is enough. All right. And I want to tell you that what we experienced in 2019 is going to be different from what we are going to experience in 2023. What? The youth are not currently on social media. The youth are physical. They are physically uh, manifesting all their activities. They are going from one street to the other, from one location to the other, sensitizing themselves, mobilizing themselves to get the youth to be actively involved in politics, not as the way it used to be with the Godfatherism, sentimental attachment, with all the favoritism. This all is right, now a platform where a son or daughter of nobody can actually become somebody without having to know anybody. The youth are saying that politics is not going to be business as usual, but It'll this time around, it is going to be a all right, selfless you, service Shago. to humanity. All right, so we'll see. That is, we'll see that's how, the youth, youth position. Thank you. All right, we'll see how Shego Odual of uh, Youth Democratic Party and, of course, Olufemi uh, Ojo, Lagos Youth um, uh, Parliament. Uh, we went to the street, uh, we, we sampled um, the, the opinions of the average Nigerian concerning um, youth in politics and the youth uh, taking uh, high up uh, positions. Uh, this is what we came up with. So we'll take that and we'll return in a moment. Uh, stay with us. Being uh, positioning in government has nothing to do with uh, age. It's about commitment to humanity. Uh, anyone, regardless of age, that feels responsible for others would definitely do the right thing, regardless of age. Whether he's 70, whether he's 30, whether he's 20. It's all about humanity, concerns for humanity. That's how I think. I think it's time that the youth should um, occupy, uh, you know, uh, political positions in this country. It's, it's high time. Over time, it's always been people that we've known and they're born in the 1950s, 1960s, and you know, you know, we need more youths, uh, you know, intervening in political issues in this country. Yes, it's time for youth to occupy the upper social. At least you have seen what the elderly ones are doing. So let the elderly ones see what the youth will do also. So that if there is a mistake, they will be able to guide them on what and what to do. So we should learn from that mistake and we use it to put us out the nation. Well, it is really time because the old people are failing us, failing us woefully. So it is right time the youth take position of leadership in this country. I think the we, we the youth, I think is society and we start striving for higher political power because I think the future is the youth. The future the, the elders, our elders have been ruling the country for, for far too long and from the way it has been going, we're not going in the right direction. So I think it's high time we the youth take over for a change so that we'll see how we can be able to move this country. All right, welcome back. It's still plus politics and a cross section of Nigerians they're bearing their minds on the eve the average Nigerian youth should be given higher positions uh, in our country, Nigeria. And we still have uh, Lufemi Ojo here with us in the studios, and of course, Shego Odola, uh, who joins us uh, via uh, Zoom. Let me talk to you now, Olufemi. 
when we went on break, we were talking about structures and every other thing. Do you really think uh, the average Nigerian youth can actually break all the barriers and uh, get into maybe some sort of cabals and uh, you know, be part of a system of the, of the older generation so they can actually uh, maybe get there somehow? So, um, Justin, um, let me answer you by saying this. The governor of Kogi State is a young person. That mm. is what we say is a young person. It's part, it's part of the system. Okay. He's doing well for himself. He's creating impact. He's giving opportunity to young persons in Kogi State, right? Yeah. So, so that, that's the analogy. So I, don't, I, I, I would say, I wouldn't tell you for free how he got there, but there was processes for him to be part of that structure. So it's part of the structure now. You know, we have other young persons in governance that they are part of the structure. So what I'm saying in essence is part of the structure. First of all, the first process is be a card carry member of a party, any party. I don't know any party you want to join. That's the first step. First step as a young person, be a card carry member. It's, it's more than, player. that's why I say it's more than tweeting. Oh. Just have a card carry member, then go for meetings. It's a process. You can't just wake up one day and say you want to be the president of Nigeria. Like um, Shegun was saying, I can ask him for free, what impact are you making in your street or your estate you are staying? Mm -hmm. Can you wake up? My questions I always ask young persons is, can you wake up in your estate this morning and tell people in your estate, don't go out? Would they listen to you? Do you have a voice that is... Do heard? you have a voice even in where you stay? Where is Fela Duroto when he, he, he actually came out for 2019 election? Where is he? What impact okay, is he not, doing? Let's not begin to spite uh, personalities. No, uh, let's just, uh, let's just uh, be as, uh, you know logical as possible. But then again, let me go back to uh, Shergo. A question was uh, posed uh, to you now, but let me just paraphrase, you know, do you really think uh, the average Nigerian youth is actually making enough impact uh, within their domain before they could actually play at the national level? Well, at the moment, consider the fact that the youths have not been given a fair chance before now. No matter how we try to sugarcoat it, no matter how we try to, you know, make it seem, the truth of the matter is, and the reality of it is the fact that the youths are being signed blank. And that has created a mental, uh, 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 it has given them a, a kind of mental orientation to make them feel that they are not important. They are not supposed to be in any system. They are not supposed to even have their own voice. But when you push somebody to the wall, they tend to turn back at you. And that is what is happening right now. So what is happening right now right, is that you want the youth to be a card carrying member of a political party. But then let me ask you a question. How can I trust a candidate from a party I don't trust? If you have a political party and you cannot trust that political party, how then can you trust any candidate that comes out of that political party, be it a youth or any other person or an adult? It is not possible. So the first thing is that as important as the mission, the process is also important. The history, the tradition, the beginning, the foundation, all of these things are important. Now, you talk about the youth who are currently in, that, in the system. What are they being taught in the system? The, since we gained uh, independence since 1960 up to this moment, what has Nigeria achieved? How many youths have been helped? How many innovators have Nigeria been able to, you know, uh, uh, present after that? Now, when we look at things like that, we will see that there, from PDP to APC, it's always been the same circle. And that is because they are replicating their mindset onto the next person that is coming on board. If we continue to take the same process, we will continue to have the same result. We need to change the process. We need to have a total reform of the entire political system. And that means that we will do away with the usual that is giving us this current situation we, have, we found ourselves in in Nigeria and present something different entirely. Let people come because of their passion for their country. Let those who want to be a Navy officer, let them not have to know anybody before they can become a naval officer. Let them be a naval officer because they are so passionate about the job. Let an army man be a, 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 a military man because he's so passionate about it. Not because I'm the son of so-so-so and I can become a lieutenant overnight. No. Let people express their passion and grow. Let's give them an enabling environment. And when we look at all of this situation, we realize that the only way we can achieve this 
is for us to deal with this situation from the foundation. And the foundation of this whole issue is the political system. It's the same political system that is enabling corruption activities and all sorts of divides in the, in the society. So if we have to deal with the situation, it has to start from foundation. And that is the position of the youth. And I promise you, if we have a youth political party, the youth are going to be a car carrying member of that political party, and you will see their, effect, their, their impact All on right. the polling unit. All I right. promise you that. Thank you, Shego um, Odola. You, uh, you have actually um, made your point, and it's been noted. We must say very thank you, a very big thank you uh, for joining us, and of course for sharing your thoughts on these particular issues uh, with us. We do appreciate it. And now, Femi, we have to let you go now, but then I just want you to sum it all up, you know, as per, you know, the future for the Nigerian youth uh, and, of course, and politics in Nigeria. Okay, um, I agree. The future is actually bright for the young persons. Let them keep doing what they know how to do best. And um, we drive results. So, and um, for Shegun, Nobody is disturbing anybody or a young person. Any, any party you feel you want to join, join the party. For me, I want a better Nigeria. You want a better Nigeria. Everybody wants a better Nigeria. Shegu wants a better Nigeria. So everybody wants, let's, yes, come, to, let, yeah, let's come to the round table and make it work. Let's, right. let's chat the Nigeria I want to see. That's, that's just the basics of this conversation. It's yeah. not about parties or party here or anything. Let's everybody bring in their expertise and drive results. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, uh, uh, Olufemi Ojo from the Lagos and Youth Parliament. We appreciate uh, your contributions on the subject matter this evening. Thank you. All right, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we return, uh, Sarap asked President Mohammed Buhari to probe misuse of COVID-19 funds in Kogi State coming up shortly. Stay with us. <laughs>